Tom, we last spoke at the Combine and you had told me you were really excited about this offseason because of the amount of the resources that this team had. Starting with free agency, give us just sort of the high level of how this team attacked that time of year. Well, um, we ended up attacking it really on defense. That's yeah. kind of just the way it, it wasn't like we went into the uh, offseason free agency and said, hey, look, we're all going defense. But that's just kind of the way it worked out. You can't really control who's going to become available across the league, but there were some players available um, that we thought could come in and really help us right now. So by adding defensive line, adding Khalil Mack, adding J.C. Jackson, even guys like, like, like uh, Troy Reeder as, as a, a depth linebacker, special teamer, like those are all important signings for us. So, but yeah, so having the cap space really allowed us to kind of go out there and, and, and ask some guys that are coming and help right away and really kind of fit where our defense is going, which is natural in this league. When you change from, from Gus Bradley to uh, Brandon Staley, there's gonna be changes as far as uh, how you're gonna line up, how you're gonna play. Yeah, so we attacked it there. We'll see how the draft works out. The draft's a little unpredictable as far as where it's gonna go. Uh, we'll be ready for wherever it, it heads, um, but uh, we're excited to get ready for the draft. What was it like being part of the Khalil Mack trade? Probably the biggest trade you've made here in your Chargers tenure. Sure, I mean, those are fun. Yeah. I mean, to add a player like him, you know, it's not only fun for us, but it's fun for the fan base, it's fun for our building. You know, all of a sudden you got Khalil Mack walking in your building. Um, there's no doubt, there's some excitement there, um, some star power. Uh, so yeah, those, you know, they don't happen every year, but uh, certainly, you know, exciting, you know, transaction to make. How much did the familiarity that some of those guys like Mac have with Staley parlay into how you guys attack free agency? Oh, it's, it's, it's a huge, it's a big factor. I mean, when you're bringing in Cleo Mack, like, you know, we know him as a football player, but we don't know everything else about him. And you're giving up some pretty significant assets and gonna pay him a lot of money. So um, having Brandon, that fact that he coached him uh, made a huge difference. Um, that he knows the player inside and out, not only how he fits the defense, but just knows him as a person and how he's gonna fit here, how he's gonna fit our culture. Um, the type of teammate he's going, he's going to be. So um, really, really important in that whole process. What were your impressions of how the AFC West has shaken out this offseason so far? They just kept, they kept coming. <laughs> I mean, I know we have to worry about ourselves, yeah. um, but you can't help to see what, what's going on in our division. Um, but we'll be ready to compete. I mean, I just think it, it raises everybody's bar, makes us all better, makes our division better. Um, so we're excited to get out there and compete with everybody. I think it's kind of better for the league too. It's fun. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind a couple guys going to a different division. I mean, <laughs> I'm really honest with you, but no, it, it's it's good. I mean, it's going to be great for TV. Yeah. I mean, every single game in our division should be must-see TV. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see where we'll see where we start the season the first couple of weeks, um, schedule-wise. But um, no, I think I mean every game in our division is going to be must-see TV, which is great. Getting to the draft, what's the biggest misconception people might have about your role as a general manager this time of year? Well, I know some people feel like the general manager just does the draft all year round, and that's really couldn't be farther from the truth. But my, my job is to kind of manage the process. I mean, we get a lot of information from all different departments and, and, and numerous people. So obviously we have the whole scouting staff, and then we have the coaching staff, and then we have our team doctors, and we have our psychological testing, and we have our, our team security and background checks. And, um, you know, it's trying to take all that information, all our, our, our uh, analytics department, Adithia and Alex Stern and the information they put together. So there's a lot of information to, to kind of take in. It's not just watching the tape and saying if you like the player or not and you draft them. Um, I wish it was, it's not, but it's also the reason why it's not because um, there's a lot of things that go into when you're gonna, you know, basically hire somebody to come work for your organization. It's more than just the ability on the field. And we're projecting all these players to be professional players. So there's a little bit of misfactor involved. Um, but it's just taking a lot of information and trying to make you know, the best uh, educated guess we can on these players. Did you get back out on the road this year for pro days at all? Uh, not, not too many, but I really hadn't done this. That really never been part of my process. Our scouts do a great job um, being everywhere where they need to be and seeing these players. But most of our work at that point is done on players. Um, there's not a lot of pro day can do for us unless you know, there's some, some really extenuating circumstances. They're important for us to be there to compile the information, but you know, a lot of our work is done by the players by that point. Tenth draft for you, 10 picks right now that this team has. How do you balance sort of the luxury of having that many picks with needs that you have as well? Yeah, it's just hard to draft for need because um, we're drafting these players not just for this year, but we're drafting these players for four or five years and our needs are going to change. So. Um, We'll just see how it goes. Now, a lot of our picks are on the back end in the sixth or seventh round, so those are different. 
Um, first time in my career I've ever been on a team that had that many picks late. Yeah. Um, it's going to be kind of fun and exciting. Some back to back. Yeah, back to back, especially with the college scouts because I'll, I know the players at the bottom of the board, but not nearly as well as our college scouts do. Um, so I think it'll be fun as far as getting the sixth and seventh round, as far as trying to hit on some players that we think have a chance to make it. Um, with six picks down there, you're hoping you hit on a couple. Um, are we going to hit on all six long term? I mean, realistically, it probably isn't going to happen. Um, but we don't att we attack it the same way. We think all these guys will have traits to make it at some point in time. Um, so I think that will be fun. So going from bottom to top, Chargers pick 17th overall. Last time they did that, Derwin James worked out pretty well. What do you make of drafting kind of in the middle of the pack right there? It's an interesting spot because it's usually um, that 17, 18, 19 range is usually where your first round graded players usually kind of end and then you're, you're into your second round group. Not, not that there's anything wrong with that, but you're right on the border. Um, I'm pretty confident uh, where we're picking, um, unless we move back, um, we'll get a guy we have as a first round graded player. So I'm pretty confident of that. But we're in a pretty good spot. I think even we'll see how the draft plays out. And um, if we move back a little bit, we maybe we'll get the same type of player we would have picked the 17. We'll kind of see how it goes make that decision as we move through the first round. Um, those are discussions we talk about in the, in the weeks leading up to the draft. So, um, but yeah, it's not a bad place to be. I'd rather be picking, obviously, you know, 32 <laughs> and, and try and do it that way. Um, but no, I think we're in a good spot. What factors parlay into moving back? Um, a lot of it's who's left on the board, uh, what group of players, um, knowing the teams behind us and what their team needs may be and who they may pick to try and give us an indication of who would be there. I don't think you'd ever want to move back with only one player in mind. Uh, that probably wouldn't be a good way to go. But uh, yeah, it's really, you know, who's there. And uh, you know, you don't, you don't really know. And to, like, I know each team gets 10 minutes, but you know, we use that time to try and, you know, try and do some strategy as well, as far as if we move back, um, you know, how far we could go. So we'll kind of see how it plays out. And then lastly, Tom, the war room's hitting the road, going to be at SoFi. What are your thoughts on that? I'm kind of excited about it. Something new, <laughs> something different. You know, get out of the office a little bit, get out of the draft room. Uh -huh. And our draft room is, you know, it's, you know, there's no windows. Now, obviously, there's no windows in our locker room, but it's, a little, it's probably dressed up a little nicer than where our draft room is. So, um, yeah, something different, get everybody involved. Um, I think there's some families that are gonna go up and, you know, they won't be in the draft room, obviously, but they'll be, you know, at the event. And um, just something different to do. And I said it before in the press conference, if, if we wouldn't have had a draft during the pandemic where we had to do it from our houses, I'd probably be a little more anxious about you know, moving the draft like this, but now I don't even think twice about it. I think we can, we can draft from right here if we had to, as long as we have a Wi-Fi connection, we can do it from anywhere. So I think it'll be fun. It's a good spot. We can do this next year. If you're right here, I'll do it outside. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. No problem.